and really for the last few months dealing with this thing concerning salvation. Amen. Salvation. I'm going to read just the first four verses of the book of Jude. It's just one chapter. And it's the last book before the book of Revelation it closes out the New Testament scriptures. Everybody have the book of Jude chapter 1. I'm going to read this the first four verses. It said Jude a bond servant of Jesus Christ and brother James. And many of you know he also was the half brother of Jesus Christ. To those who are called and sanctified, I love how that word sanctified, by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ. Now, I'm, 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 I'm reading from the New King James, or the, 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 the Revised King James Version. But I looked at the original King James Version with the be and thou and all that. It said, to those who are called sanctified by God the Father and be preserved in Jesus Christ. And it says at the end there, and called. At the beginning it said called. And at the end of the old version it said and called. It said, mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you. Below, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, underline that word, common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. For certain men have crept in unnoticed, who long ago were marked out for this condemnation ungodly men who turn the grace of our God into lewdness and deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I, I want to stop right there and I'm going to pray and then I'm going to pick back up. I'm going to talk to you today. Still we're dealing with the doctrine of salvation part four. But I want to talk to you a little bit about that common salvation call the salvation. Father, now God, we come now once again in the wonderful, mighty, and precious name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for another privilege and an opportunity, not, in, not just to come into your house of worship, but to enter into the beautiful garden of prayer, yes. to call on a holy and a merciful and a gracious and a loving God. The Father, for that, we just want to say thank you. Thank you that we do not take that privilege lightly, but because we're able to enter into the beautiful God and the prayer, because we're able to enter into the Holy of Holies, is all because of what your son Jesus done over 2,000 years ago on the cross of Calvary. The blood was, the curtain was rent from top to bottom because of the blood Amen. that was shed yeah. for our sins. And you call us a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and we are able to enter in and to call on your holy name. For that, Father, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Now, Father, the time has come. We must stand on the watch for all the time. And I acknowledge that I can do nothing without you, but with you. I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthened me. I pray, Father, that let not the wrong spirit be projected from this podium, but as we Preach your word. Let it be done in the power of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And we thank you, Father, that even as your word go forth, it will not return unto you, Lord, but it will accomplish the very thing that you sent it going to do. Give us an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying, not only to the church, but to each one of us individually concerning this common salvation. Father, we thank you. We're so grateful. We praise you and give you glory. Father, we thank you that even as your word go for it will bring forth fruit, some 60, some 70, some 100 fold. And God, the Holy Spirit, work in me, work on me, work with me, and work for me. And Jesus the Christ will be glorified and magnified in these service. We pray that as your word go for even live streaming over the internet, that somebody's soul will be saved and the backslider will come back home. 
and call upon you and ask for forgiveness for their sins. And Father, we thank you and we praise you and we give you glory. And it's in Jesus' name we do pray and we give thanks. If you would agree with that prayer, say amen. amen. I, I want to talk with you once again about that common salvation. And I and we've been dealing with the doctrine of salvation and then we've been talking about all this false teaching and then we're going to talk to you a little bit about what doctrine is because doctrine uh, is a teaching that which is being taught which is concerning doctrine and then salvation is a doctrine because that's what we're talking about and this is very important I mean it may seem kind of uh, uh, insignificant to a lot of us but we need to be mindful. It's not just about us all the time. It's about our children. It's about our grandchildren. It's about our brothers and sisters that may not be saved. That 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 that, that getting all these false teachings and all kind of doctrine. We're living in a time now that men are stand up bold and deny the only Lord Jesus Christ and say that He's not God and. These, these so-called demons that have been released from the pits of hell that are actually blinding our children and men of our brothers and sisters. I mean, these are our family folks. And what makes it so bad, a lot of these are individuals that once tasted the powers of the ages. And the Bible talks about if we fall away, then there's nothing else to bring them back. They crucify the cross, Jesus again, all again on the cross. So it, it, it's, 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 it's a very uh, important time that we're living in that we need to be enlightened. We need revelation about it because he, he talked about contentment for the faith. And I don't want to get ahead of myself, but the book of Jude is the only book in the Word of God that's devoted to this great apostasy. We talked about how Jude the Jew was the, uh, the brother of James, who was the pastor of the church, the first church at that Jerusalem. He was also the half-brother of Jesus Christ. And he talked about uh, Jude is the only book that, that's dedicated, devoted to this thing. And he talks about this great apostasy that's coming upon the church, coming upon the world before the second coming of Jesus Christ. This, this, is, this is awesome. In other words, the book of Jude is also a book uh, that, that, that's called to be a judge of all the New Testament books and everything. He judges these books. Now the word apostasy, my brothers, so to give me a few minutes, I'm not going to hold it on. It, it means a great falling away. And, and when he talks about that apostasy, he talks about, it's twofold. He it talks about falling away from the truth. And then also he talks about falling away from the faith. Now, you notice something. Let me read this. It Jude, a bond servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James. And he said, those who are called sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ. Mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you. Below, I was very diligent write to you concerning your common salvation. I find it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which, which once was, was delivered to all the saints. Now immediately, if you read that, he turns quickly away from talking about salvation and he begins to talk about all the evil and, and the sinfulness that's coming upon the world. My God, he moves away all the way the Holy Ghost switches him. Y'all know him. I, I mean, he switches him from talking about the common salvation and begins to talk about all of these so-called ungodly things that are going to happen in, in the world. Amen. He said that those who are sanctified and preserved, sanctified, I mean, what are we talking about? Those who are kept by God. And then he uses the word preserved. Thank God that he's a preserver, amen. To, a preserve me to God and to protect. A word that, that, that just God will preserve you. Once he saved you, that God will preserve you. In other words, it's a continuous preservation a preservation of the believer. In other words, God has 
got to say more of that. In other words, first of all, you got to want to be kept. And when you want to be kept, then God will keep you. A whole lot of folks have backslid, turned their back on Jesus because they no longer wanted to be killed. Am I hearing anybody now? I, I, I'm trying to sell this thing down a little bit. In other words, now when you use that word sanctification, it also talks about being kept by God. Those who are sanctified and preserved. But it also means to be set aside, a separation unto God. You have got to understand that once you be ask Jesus Christ, to come into your heart and turn repentant and turn for your sins. There was a certain level of degree of sanctification that came upon you all the time. That's the reason why we read St. John chapter 17 because Jesus prayed that prayer. Now sanctification also, my brothers and sisters, regardless of how long you've been saved, it is an ongoing process. In other words, you can be just as sanctified and just as holy as you want to be. It's up to you. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. And in other words, that's what he's talking about when he talks about this so-called thing when he talks about common salvation. It ain't nothing that deep. It ain't all that big of a revelation when he talks about a common salvation. In other words, all of us here as believers, I don't care whether you're back this Methodist, Pentecostal, Holiness, whatever, all of us out have some things in common. And the thing that we have in common, my brothers and sisters, is that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that He came to the world over 2,000 years ago. He was conceived in a virgin Mary by the power of the Holy Ghost and He was born and He lived 33 and a half years and he died and he went to hell in our place and on that third day morning he got up with all power in his hand. In other words, that's common. I, I don't care what you talk in tongues and all that. One thing we ought to have in common is that Jesus Christ is Lord and that Jesus Christ he is the Savior of the world. Amen. That's all right. <laughs> Otherwise, it, it, it's coming. We, we may disagree in some things, and you might believe what's saved, always saved, and you, you, you might believe that it don't take all that shouting and all that kind of stuff, <laughs> but, but, but you don't know my story. It may take all that <laughs> shouting and talking and talking oh, because no. you may not know the hell that I oh. went through, but, but I, I don't care where you go to church on Saturday or where you go to church on Sunday. We but one thing we ought to have in common is that Jesus the Christ, he is the Son of God, and that he is the Savior of the world. Yep. <laughs> uh, yeah, you be talking about the Father, but, but, but no man can come to the Father except the Father draw up him. And the only way you're going to come to the Father is that you got to come to his Son, Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, see, now, Jesus, now, now, also our faith, we we, we understand that <laughs> faith is the source of the things hope for, the evidence of things not seen. We understand that the just shall live by faith. We understand that we walk by faith and not by sight. See, see that's important right there. See, that's the common thing that we have. Now, now, now that may seem little to some of y'all, but remember some folk got tripped up out there in the wilderness. What Moses went up on Mount Sinai trying to get the Ten Commandments. Uh, they, 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 they had to have a God that they could see. You remember the golden cat? Let me tell y'all. In other words, that's where a whole lot of folks here right now. It's difficult for a whole lot of people to believe in something that they cannot physically and tangibly put their hands on. That's the reason why it's easy for you to worship your job, your money, your house, your husband, your wife, your children. Something that you can tangibly put your but we walk by faith and not by sight. I wasn't there with 2,000 years ago when he went to the cross of Calvary, but I believe it by faith. I wasn't there when the cloud took him away and the angel stood there after why you stand there gave This same Jesus going to come back in like now. I wasn't there, but I believe it by faith. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that's common right there. See, see, that's what 
got a whole lot of folk tripped up right now that they can worship the football and the basketball player and the, and the musical artists and all these things. Come on, talk to me. And they proclaim themselves as being gods. And see, that was the problem even in, in the Old Testament. Even the wolf and the dog, they'll bark at the moon. Uh, come on, ain't no man in the moon, but they'll bark at the moon. Uh, Y'all know that. Uh, and see, there's a part in all of us. Uh, that, 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 that's, a, that's a part in all of us. Uh, I can't explain it just in words. There's a part in all of us that desire to worship something or somebody. Y'all know that. is that we believe that that power in the blood of Jesus <laughs> that, that, that's coming right there I, I don't care what it is Michael y'all don't hear me that that's power in the name of Jesus yeah. and that, that that's power in the blood of Jesus yeah. y'all don't hear me I, I mean you, you can try Clorox and Mr. Clean y'all don't hear me Y'all don't hear me. 
I'm trying to help somebody now. But Jude, now he talks about this thing. Look at this thing, y'all, for a minute. He said, those who are called and sanctified. In other words, if there ever was a time in, in, in this life, in this age, that you need to be sanctified. In other words, you got to press into Jesus. If there ever was a time to pray, the time to pray is right now. See, we don't ever know what tomorrow holds, but we know who holds tomorrow. See, you can wake up tomorrow and everything in this nation shut down because of a cyber attack or a stock market crash on tomorrow. Anything certain to happen. We got a few idiots that got their hands on nuclear buttons. Anything can happen at any time. These are perilous times that we are living in. It's time now to pray and to sanctify yourself because you let us know that before Jesus comes, there was going to be a separation. There was going to be a falling away from the truth and from the faith. Oh my God. See, several months ago, y'all don't probably want to pay no attention no way. That's just job. I was talking about I don't believe that God will come back now because there's such a separation in the body of Christ. But God began to check me on this thing. Y'all don't, that's all right, y'all don't have that, that's all right. You specified all these things that were going to take place just before the sudden return of Jesus Christ. I'm not trying to preach doom and gloom and I'm not trying to get anybody afraid or scared of anything, but you let us know, along with all the other scriptures in the Bible, that these times are going to come. Y'all don't have it. In 1 Timothy 4 and 1, he said, Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times, talking about times like right now, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits yes. and doctrines of demons. Y'all will have it. Then verse 2 of that same chapter, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their own conscience steered with a hot act. We talked about it a little bit on the last Sunday, but God just want me to bow down on this thing just a little bit more. In other words, we got a whole lot of folk on eyes. They ain't nothing but so-called hypocrites. We're living in the days of John the Baptist when Jesus was born and walked in the face of the earth. They need to talk about the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They had a form of godliness, but no power at all. Y'all, they have a conscious fear. I've never seen a time when people don't have a conscience no more about their lifestyle. Even little children are cut their parents out, and parents are afraid. They spoil a rod, spoil a rod, and you spoil a child. Oh my God! Oh my God! Am I helping anybody now? Then now, he come back in second Timothy three one and seven. Just give me a few more minutes. I, I'm just a male man. You don't want to open up your letter read. You know it's a bill. But you got to pay up. Sanctify yourself. You know you're still lying. And we go in there. Just let that alone. Second Timothy 3, 1 and 7. He said in the last days, I'm just paraphrasing. Last days, talking about now. Y'all read it. I was there and roll on just a little while long. Long time before Jesus come. Oh, Jesus continue to tell. But we're living in some time now. That God will have to make a move. Now, even with Sodom and Gomorrah, the scripture said this self, that if God don't soon do something about all this wickedness in the world, right. that he would have to repent for destroying Sodom and Gomorrah. Right. Is that not the word? Y'all say that's, that's the word. You may not that's the word, it, bitch. But that's the word. So we're living in the time everything is coming out of the cloth. Oh, y'all know that. We got homos and homeless folks on the streets living on the bridge. But we're living in a time now that even dogs got trousers and t-shirts and got a hat to go on their head. I'm talking about somebody that look proper, dressed up looking better than a homeless person on the street. We got no shelter for dogs than we do for human beings. Something is wrong with that. Oh, my God. That's all right. Mm -mm. 
That's all right. Stay right there, bitch. In the last days, perilous times will come. <laughs> the men will be lovers of themselves. I, I'm just going to run down a little bit. And, and y'all can say amen if you hear me. Uh, uh, you need to just clap your hands do something. That men will be lovers of themselves. <laughs> lovers of money. My name is Johnny. I like some money now. I want some money. But I know that love money can't buy everything. Come on, you can help out now. Uh, money answers all things. But it won't buy you into help. See a whole lot of folks. At one time, they were thinking that they loved one with the purgatory. And you give a certain amount of money to the church, you can buy their soul out of purgatory. But my God, you got to help what I'm saying now. My God, what does a prophet of man to gain the whole world and die and lose his soul? Jesus got away with purgatory when the saints of old, they were resurrected out of the graves and they went back to be with Jesus. My God, y'all don't hear me. That's all right. Read the Bible now. Moses, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents. I, I never seen in all of my life parents scared to whoop their children. And I can understand it. Because depending on where you whoop them at, you might end up on CNN. <laughs> Y'all don't have this all. And the whole world be talking about you. Because we are living in an age of technology. Anybody put their phone out and have you live stream. Have you all on the internet. The two of them look dirty behind it. Behind all red neck they know somebody knocking on your door. In the Department of Social Service. I understand, I understand. My God, but if you spell her off, you'll spoil the child. Children that ain't even got no manners no more. My God, when I was coming, I was always taught to say yes, sir, no, ma'am, and yes, ma'am. I, I mean, yes and no. Y'all yeah, don't hear me. I'm trying to help somebody. I, I mean, they cussing like a sailor. And, and when they get all this cussing, bro, don't blame it all on TikTok. Y'all don't hear me. Because we're living in a time now as well that the cell phone is our baby, sir. We ain't watching our children and raising them no more. We got TikTok raising our children. Y'all don't hear me. Twitter. And everybody else raising our children. Chilling all crazy in the head because we allow anybody to talk and put stuff in our children's ear day. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Look that long. We, we ain't more than nothing. Then get that phone going in and be quiet. Don't bother me no more until it be charging or something. And then we we'll teach them how to charge it and everything. Y'all, y'all. That's sad. I'm unholy. I'm unthankful. I mean, don't appreciate nothing. Oh, I don't care how many Michael George you buy, they still are unthankful. Yeah. Just keep on giving. I mean, children don't earn nothing no more. We just give them everything. When we were raised, you had to put up a little help. Go out there and work, put your little down payment on the car, and mama and daddy step in there and throw their ass in there. Come on, y'all. That's right. You ain't had no credit. They're going to sign off on to give you a little boost in life. Y'all don't have to try to help somebody in the house. Now we just give them everything. My God, they ain't got to work for nothing. Never in my life. I'm not all children now. Don't get me wrong. But I see so many children so lazy. They come on the job, want a paycheck, but don't want to do nothing. My y'all don't hear that. Our honest days work for our honest day pay. And that's what we were taught in the scripture saying. When I go on that job tomorrow, I need to work as if go unto the Lord. Because somebody is watching me. Because I'm claiming this call and salvation. And if I'm claiming call and salvation, then I'll see some of Jesus on the inside of me. Oh my God. Oh my God. Give me a few more minutes, y'all. Just give me a few more minutes. Am I helping anybody now? Just unthankful. I, I, I know. She, she, we, we got all this kind of stuff all up in the marriages, in, in, the, in the church. Uh, come on, talk to me now. We got wives that ain't nothing but hookers to their husbands. Well, what do you mean by that, Pastor? 
the Bible says, "Will not hold probably no." Don't don't go lay down with your man unless he buy you something. Come on, talk to that. Necessary 
the righteous of exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith, which was once for all delivered to the saints. Because they're saying me. You know, I told y'all last week, you got a church on every corner, and it's just like ice cream. You got all kind of flavor. They'll tell you it's all right to be married and have an extra on the side. They'll tell you it's all right y'all to be gay, and they got a civil marriage, and all that kind of stuff. But where you can go, see, nobody wants the truth anymore. Pastor said, it's all right to get a little bit on the side. 
ought to be read out of poop pit. You giving people condoning sin from the poop pit. Y'all, y'all don't get that. Yeah, I, I'm trying to help somebody. These are straight men that have crept in unnoticed, ungodly men who turn the grace of our God into lewdness and deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. See, the woman of God got a hat on right there. That's all right. But we'll let them come up in the church with their ball cap on up in the holy place. This is the holy place. This is holy ground. I remember somebody said it's, it's up the road. We got to praise and worship leaders barefooted in the church. Well, we'll swallow a camel and get choked on a neck. But I remember a man by the name of Moses when he went up to the burning bush. In other words, he went up to church one day. He was in the temple of an almighty God. And the bush was burning. And he told Moses, take them shoes off, boy. Off of your feet for the ground you standing on is a holy ground. And here we are folk dying and going to hell. And we worry about some praise and worship leader that barefooted in the holy place. On the holy ground. Something wrong with that picture. We get stuck all twisted now. All of us ought to pick up our feet. But the ground you standing on is holy ground. Uh, my, 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 my. My, 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 preacher falling out by stuff like that. You ought to put your shoes on in the church. Y'all don't hear me. But for a I will recollect, when Moses went up that, that day, he was in church. They called that place with the smoke and the lightning and the thunder of the Just a little bit of Jude. Y'all go back and read it again. I know you had a few months ago. Jude was one of the books of the month. But it goes on. He talks about them ungodly men. They twist the word of God. They did not Jesus as I was crucified and resurrected Savior. I got them on my job and said, why do you go to church? Yeah. <laughs> 
and the cloud took him away. Y'all, he cut it back in light when the trouble of God was sound and the dead in Christ shall rise and the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. You know what I'm saying? Get up! I don't know what he's going to say, but he's going to come back with a shout and the dead in Christ shall rise first and then we which are alive That they don't understand. Y'all In other words, somebody talking in tongues, they'll mock you because they don't understand that if the Holy Ghost on the inside of you, they'll wear without water. Clouds that got they got no rain. Y'all they'll grumble and fault back. Always trying to find fault in any little thing. Brother complain all of them. They'll follow their own lust. They are arrogant and they are good at flattering people. Y'all go ahead. They are good at flattering people. Using all these explicit words. Big words that you don't even understand. And you sit there and you flatter. My God, y'all go ahead. Oh, he's so intelligent. He's an educator. He don't even know what he's talking about either. He's just throwing out there you because he know you don't even understand. You're being flattered, playing with your emotions. They are devices. Always trying to divide and separate both. Causing all kind of confusion. Word and mind. Call them out. Devoid of the spirit. No, but they ain't got no Holy Ghost. Ain't got no spirit in them. They got a form of God in them and not the power of their love. Oh my God. It's called common salvation. Common salvation. Jude explicitly says that this was going to happen. That in that last day before the second coming, go back and read for yourself of Jesus Christ. There's going to be a great falling away. Right, we see it take place. From the truth and from the church. Yes. People ain't going to go nowhere where the truth is being preached. Yes, but they go up their emotions. Mm -hmm. Their emotions. Their motivated speakers. I ain't preaching the gospel no more. I'm not trying to beat anybody there. But I'm going to preach Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I was once crucified and resurrected and saved. There's no other name given in heaven and earth. Well, by anybody can be saved, but by the name of Jesus. Yeah. He is the door, and the only door. You can't go up no other way through Muhammad, Buddha, through your big mama name. Come on, talk to me. You got to go up there on your own, repent of your sins, and accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, and then as your Lord. I say it like that because it's a prophecy. Sometimes folks just give it all up. They be so grateful to be saved. Lord, I give it all to you. I surrender all. I remember when the first guy said, I'm ready to come. We should say that song at the Baptist Hill. The song in there called, I surrender all. I used to question that song. And one time I stopped singing because I was a newcomer. I go ahead and surrender it all. I thought I had. But when you start about surrendering all, that means. God got access to the whole house. All your past secrets, what's in the closet, your little must in the closet, and everything. Come on, talk to me. Come on, talk. We got saved. Every now and then we are dip a little snow. Every now and then we drink a little beer. We got a little Jack Daniels in the closet. Oh, that's all right, huh? Right, every, every now and then we'll flip back in the old magazine. We had a hot top on. They had a little curly kid. She has all the little hair on They got no hair on them now. But on it, they turn white. But they all one. 
will lead us and guide us in all things. And we thank you. Father, we give you praise. And even as you establish us in this community of Greenwood, God, help us to be assistance and an aid and the network with all the other churches that have come in salvation, all the other pastors. Bless them, Father. Bless their ministries. Give them the provisions and the people that they need to carry out their assignment in this great city, in this county of Greenwood, and all the surrounding areas. And Father, we thank you, and we praise you, and we give you glory. But you said in your word, Lord Jesus, that if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. And Father, we standing on your word, Lord Jesus, that you're going to do the drawing. And we thank you, and we praise you, and give you glory. Seal the word. Seal the word. We bind the devil right now that will try to choke the word out of your people. It's in Jesus' name we do pray and we give thanks. Come on, give God some praise all over the house.